Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Hearts Round 4 as we are playing as the Byzantine Empire. So the first thing we're going to be doing in today's episode is we're actually going to be promoting our primary general here into the officer corps because we still have one more position open. We're waiting for one of our generals uh, in order to get something that would be desirable. We already have an infantry expert. Now it would be nice to have uh, him be our, our infantry guy because He'll likely eventually get to level 8, and then he'll get those additional bonuses. However, we're going to actually go ahead and make him our army regrouping expert here. So let's go ahead and promote him to that. And then I believe we should have the political power to appoint him right now. Yeah, it's only 50 political power. Now, we already had somebody available for this because the communists are friendly or loyal. Uh, I think we looked at this last episode and decided we'd probably appoint him. However, we appoint him instead then he'll eventually level up even higher and get us that 12% division recovery rate. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put him in place, and then we're going to be continuing dealing with this invasion here that happened last episode. So they're still attempting to attack right there. That's where these uh, Italian convoys are attacking at the moment. And so we have to have him stay at this location. Uh, let's go ahead and have this guy take this province here. We've already defeated the divisions there. We're also defending this port here. All those troops that try are trying to get into that port at the moment. And since this is going to be a failure, let's just go ahead and stop it. And we kind of just have to wait a little bit until our divisions here get their organization up. So what we could be doing is getting a planning bonus in the meantime. All right, so this should be finished up here. Excellent. And then because they're trying to move here, let's not leave this undefended. We're going to put him here, we're also going to put this guy here, and we're going to put this one here as well, because we just don't need this many divisions coming over to this front, because this should be fairly easily to get this finished up here. We've been trying to go to this uh, island here, Corfu, for a while, but uh, haven't been able to because they keep on attacking us. Let's make sure these guys stay here. And I'm guessing those ones are coming over to this island. So let's see what we did in this convoy battle. We only sunk one of those, unfortunately. I'm guessing the, the rest are retreating after having felled that invasion. Now we need to move our planes, because we're no longer fighting in this zone here. Move them over here so that we're uh, getting a maximum amount of support here. And we just do not have a very large air force at the minute. It's pretty pitiful, actually. Uh, let's go and attack here. Take their air base. And all these units are pretty weak due to our own lack of equipment at this moment. Let's go and attack here now. And that's probably what we're going to be doing in today's episode, after we finish up with these two fronts here, the one where the naval invasion is, and it looks like we're having some uh, supply issues here. That will be fixed once we get control of this port, though. And we did get the cipher for the Italians. What we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and keep it for the, the passive bonus. So we get that air detection, the interception mission efficiency, and then all those intel bonuses. And we're not going to use this until we're, we're doing an invasion, probably. So once we start doing invasions of Italy, then it makes sense to actually make use of the cipher. Uh, so let's go and go after, I'm thinking the British next. Makes the most sense. That would be 838 days. Hmm, man, that's going to take a long time. What if we did Austria-Hungary instead? Yeah, we could do them much quicker. So that's what we're going to do. Work on them. We'll get it done in 200 days. They have not been uh, getting as many of the, the upgrades. All right, so this has now become a problem with supply. So what we should do is just go ahead and take all these troops here and then put them back into that training army that we have going over here so they can get trained up because yeah, we just don't need this many troops over here. And then we'll keep this one division here just in case they still have troops coming over that way. Though it looks like we did finish up with the... Uh, uh, you know, the battle here sinking those convoys. We sunk six of them. Not bad. So more casualties for the Italians. And we are winning all throughout here. Uh, we do have a doctrine available. Naval doctrine. Let's go and get the last one along this branch. Giving us bonuses for cruisers and submarines. Alright, excellent. Uh, we did get those engines three. So I was going to design the planes as soon as we had that done. But let's just wait till we get this one. It's going to be 43 days. It's okay, guys. We barely have any planes in the air anyways because, uh, you know, we just don't have the, the production to build a lot of them. And then we've been getting them shot down as well. But they have been providing us some useful bonuses. So we should probably devote another one of our research slots to getting the stuff for the tanks, so the, the armor and the, the engines. 
go ahead and start on that. And it looks like we got some decision available. This is the the war bonds. I need to close this here. It's just too many uh, battle plans. So do we want to do the war bonds? So we did it once before. I think we're not going to do it this time, guys, because I would really like to get this taken here, and, and obviously we have to save up our political power for quite some time before we can do that. And Australia is now in the Japanese faction. Okay, that's interesting. So they're now in uh, Japan's faction, which means they'll go to war with the British rather than joining the British, as we've seen the, the Canadians do. Uh, let's go and send another division in here, though really the key should be getting behind these guys. So let's go ahead and have him go over here and take these two provinces. Rather than uh, pushing any further along the coast there. Now let's see what we've done over here. It looks like we're just about done, but all of our troops are currently taking off. Uh, let's just have him go all the way here to finish up this objective. And these guys can come along as well. Uh, though this guy here, let's actually have him stop moving and instead join up with that training army. Alright, so just finishing up the invasion, getting those troops wiped out. See what we've done in the seas here. So sunk another convoy there. Probably still don't have control, not yet, but we are actually contending here. It's yellow now. Uh, we got the improved artillery upgrade. Alright, excellent. So, I suppose we still need to go out to the anti-air to get the next levels of those. But I don't think we're going to get those yet, guys. There's so many other things that we need to get here. Uh, so we're actually going to devote one of our research slots towards getting ships. Uh, because we still need to get the next submarine hole. And then if we ever want to get cruisers, we got a ton of techs we still have to go for. Uh, so yeah, let's get this submarine hole here. This is going to be 82 days to get that research. We do have all these research bonuses, naval research bonuses as well, that we can take advantage of. So it looks like there's uh, five units here that we'll be able to get wiped out. So let's go ahead and attack and get those guys destroyed. All right, so we have taken this over. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and go this way. And then we're going to have one of these units continue up along the coast. Well, this guy's going to go ahead and grab that province for us. And now that we've taken that uh, port and supply hub, we do have some supply here now. We got the machine-assisted decryption. Uh, so let's go to get the next level. I know this is costing us a lot in civilian factories, but it'll help us get those decryptions done quicker. Sinking more troop convoys as well. And no more invasions at this moment. All right, so we're just going to finish this up here. And then we'll, we'll uh, set these guys up for their next order. Still pushing up along the coast successfully. And we'll follow the rails here. And I don't think we need any more units here. Yeah, we're going to let him go over to the front. And I think this is probably fine. These units sh should be able to get the job done. Alright, we'll have him take these provinces here. And then he'll go up along here. Alright, excellent. So we have Mamhar. But our, our problem, of course, is equipment. That's why we can't really build any units, unfortunately. All right, so now that we have this done, what we want to do is protect against any future naval invasions with these units here, while also having some over here for our own naval invasion, so we can launch that whenever, uh, you know, whenever we're able to. So because of the fact that we have this invasion here, we will actually need to keep the fallback lines. So yeah, he'll be on that one. And yeah, we'll just set these guys up and let's see who we want to send. We're going to send our special forces, even though they're specialized for mountain. They're still, uh, they have higher organization and all that good stuff. So we're going to send them over there. And what I'm thinking is probably just five units would be enough. Well, let's see how many of these we actually need to cover all these ports on this side. So let's go ahead and do another fallback line here. Obviously, we can't protect all the ports, so we'll just have to kind of pay attention to if uh, any invasions are popping up. So I'll take them, put them over here. And then probably want to protect the capital here. I mean, we have all these training troops. They're probably not going to go over there anyway. I think we'll be all right. Now, we've seen that they also wanted to do a naval invasion here, so we'll put one division there. And then maybe some over here in the Peloponnesian Peninsula. 
That might be a, a good idea. Oops, my bad. Uh, a good idea as well. Just in case they decide to attack us here. And got one more unit over here. So put him right here. Alright, excellent. So this last one then we'll put on his invasion for a total of six units. And we'll do that as soon as they're able to. Let me see, do we still have the ships over here? Now, for some reason, they are just adamant about coming over here, despite the fact that we put them on naval invasion support. I'm not entirely sure why they're not over here. You know, to help us with the invasion. Yeah, they, we're not even doing invasions anywhere else. Yeah, they should be staying over here. Yeah, for some reason, they really want to go over that way, and that's resulting in us getting bombed, the fleet. So that's not good. Well, we have our fighters here still, but it looks like the British have also devoted some, some planes over here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually use more fighters here. So let's go with the, the smaller fighter wing here. And have them try and help us out over here. So a total of 155 planes. Well, the rest of these are actually going to come over here. Though, I don't know how good of the support's going to be until we take that airbase. Yeah, we'll bring them on over here to help us out. All right, so let's go and push forward here. And because we have taken our time with this, do not really paying attention to this front, it has resulted in more Italian divisions coming over here that we can now cut off and destroy, so that's a good thing. So we'll take advantage of that. And let's go and have this guy take this province here. And yeah, we'll just kind of shoot up towards the coast here as we wait for these other two divisions to get over here. Make sure that nobody's going over to that other front. And uh, we are getting more Lend-Lease offers, which we will definitely accept. The Australians are giving us some Lend-Lease. Continuing sinking those convoys. Those are freight and troop convoys. All right, so he's going to go ahead and go get that port for us. While he goes after the airbase, and then he's going to continue going this way. All right, so he'll go this way. And Hong Kong has fallen. So yeah, war's been uh, probably just in, as intense over there in Asia as it is over here in Europe. We just aren't as uh, involved with that, obviously. Because we don't have any territory over there, nor do I think we'll do any fighting in Asia. Unless we get like an ally over there or something. Alright, so they're actually going to be leaving out of here. So let's see if we can't get there first. Because yeah, they're currently defending here. All right, so that didn't work out the way I wanted, but maybe we can still cut them off right here, and that will include this division. And, well, that's interesting. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that we were in this war here. Uh, Spain was never pulled in, but Poland was. Like, I knew we were at war with Peru, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic because they were in the Allies before they, they joined this faction. Yeah, I don't recall the French or, or Poland ever being called in. But there is territory that we want. We want French Syria. We'd also like this territory, but I highly doubt we'll have the points for it. But we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go after this territory for, uh, first. We could also go after the ships, though I'm not entirely sure what they still have left. Well, there's a few ships of, of Poland. Those are screening ships. So it could go for those. But I think taking the states is more important. So let's go ahead and do that. Because, yeah, we want control of all of Syria. And it looks like we, we do have the points to get further territory. At least get this one here. And that is going to be it, unfortunately. All right, so that's interesting. The Germans are actually taking over all this territory here. And, yeah, we still can't do anything there. So yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything else. We're only going to get Syria and this one province here. I think that's going to be it here, guys. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I was hoping to get something else. But yeah, that's, that's going to be it, guys. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and confirm an exit. And at least we got something from this. I wasn't really expecting to, to get anything here. So just taking a look at what all happened. Uh, Germany took the most. Uh, they got 52 states. America got four states. Fortunately, we won't quite know who got what. Considering the fact that, you know, you also have all the occupations as well. And I'm seeing the Americans are actually over here. Well, that's interesting. All right, so yeah, the Americans took four states. Austria-Hungary got a few. We got five total. 
several countries annexed. Poland was puppeted by uh, the Soviet Union, or the Union of Soviet Republics of Europe and Asia. Did their name get longer? I don't recall it saying of Europe and Asia before. And then India, Madagascar, and Tahiti were liberated. Also, a bunch of equipment was seized. All right. So, yeah, we've now got control of this territory over here. We don't just control it. We actually own it. Now, from my understanding, if we can do the invasion on Cyprus, then we should be able to get uh, cores on this territory. Apparently, in order to take that one decision to get the cores over here, we do have to have control of Cyprus. We had difficulty with that because you can't seem to get control of this sea zone, or at least not yet. And it looks like we might have lost some submarines. Yeah, we lost two right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace those losses. That was uh, these two here. So we're just going to replace both of them. I think we lost another one somewhere else too. Also, apparently we have a fighter wing over here. So let's go ahead and move them over here so they can help us out. We're trying to gain control of the skies in the eastern Mediterranean. We could also go this way, I suppose. Yeah, that's probably going to have better uh, coverage. So we'll move them over there. So yeah, still sinking all these... Uh, Freight convoys here. Uh, also, the situation here is going to get weird. Oh, yeah, damn. Yeah, that's unfortunate because of Germany taking this. Yeah, we are in a terrible position now. Damn. Yeah, that sucks. I hate when peace treaties mess everything all up. So, yeah, we're going to, like, we're at the point where we could lose these troops now because of this stupid peace treaty. I hate when that happens. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm occupying it. It's mine. <laughs> but, of course, we're not at war with them, so... So we might end up losing a unit from this, you guys. It, it does seem we will. We're going to lose one division because of this situation here, because of the peace treaty. That nah, just sucks. Maybe not. Maybe we can get him out. But he did still take losses, and he's got to go brave the seas as well. We don't know that he's going to survive that. But we'll try. So he's going to go this way. And then we need all these troops to join onto this front as well. Uh, also, we got some military factories. Let's go ahead and get those assigned. I think we're going to have to... Yeah, put it into infantry equipment. And so we're not opening any other fronts right now. Uh, lost another submarine, but sunk a convoy. Yeah, we're not going to open any other fronts. Because we're actually going to take that... There's another submarine we lost. We're actually going to take the time that we were going to do before we ended up seeing the opportunity to declare war and get this territory against the Allies. If you guys recall, I said we we're going to spend some time at peace. This guy's going to have to go this way. He's not going to make it over there in time. All right, and then we want him to, to go on this front as well. And we just need to wait until the Allies take this territory back over. Okay, this is actually... He, he's able to escape this way. All right, that works out fine. So we just need to get one more unit out of there. And then we should be good to go. Um, but it doesn't look like we're getting the supply that we need here. So we might need to... I don't know. I don't really want to have to build anything. But the supply hub's really far away. But there's one right there. So if they can just take that territory, we can just take it back. So I'm not going to actually... I'm not going to do anything there, guys. Not right now. We're not going to build anything. We have other things that we're currently working on that I think are a bigger priority. Frankly, we've got to get these troops trained up. So we can put them onto a front. And yeah, we're just going to take that time that we were going to do in the first place. You know, the time to... Oh, this guy's leaving. Gonna do this and this. Hopefully the Italians will come take this territory back over from the Germans so that we can take it from them. And then we'll at least occupy it. But yeah, we were gonna take that time to, you know, build up our strength. You know, we have the, the huge uh, equipment issues which we're trying to get solved here. We just don't have very many units either. Uh, we got the European Association. So this is uh, a Danish faction. Let's see who all has joined. Just uh, Denmark and Luxembourg. So since Luxembourg was just uh, declared on, declared war on by the Germans, who have not gotten past here yet. All right, so they're having difficulty here. This confused me a little bit that uh, the British gave the Belgians control of part of France here. But yeah, they still have not broken through here yet. But this will result in Denmark now being at war with Germany as well. So Germany just keeps on opening up these fronts. Now, lots of convoys being sunk over here. Look at all these. Wow. Yeah, a bunch of convoys being sunk throughout the Mediterranean. 
Do we control this season? We do not. What we might want to go ahead and do is launch this so that whenever we do get control, they'll just go. So we don't have to like see it. Now our units are incredibly weak. We just don't have the equipment for them. And so yeah, that's what we're gonna spend this time doing guys is uh, fixing the equipment issues. And this is now opened up. I actually don't wanna push forward though because I want the Italians to come over here and take this first. So let's not push forward. We gotta wait for them to do this here. We'll just stay on defense. Kind of a shame, but uh, hopefully they'll come over here and do this and take that territory so we can advance. Uh, the Germans do not have a port over here, so they can't defend it. Now you can see the Italians are over here. They'll come take that territory eventually. And America wants us under some lend lease. We will accept that. And we're also going to accept this, uh, accept this uh, not aggression pact. No invasions planned currently. And we finally got our national focus. So we got to restore the Byzantine Empire decisions. We'll have to take a look at those. Also gave us more war support that we didn't really need. And that means we are completely done with this branch of the focus tree. Let me take that back. We have not done these three that we skipped. And this is one that I don't see us doing anytime soon. I mean, it'll be, it's helpful slightly, uh, but yeah, I don't see us doing that anytime soon. Uh, this one here, that's helpful too, but again, just kind of slightly. We have far better focuses to get, but we are gonna do this one here. I know that this is actually some penalties for us, but considering the fact that we're gonna be enemies with the Germans, it makes sense to get it. And I'm wondering how it'll affect the debt. It seems like it's just gonna remove our, uh, you know, the debt we have to Italy. But you'd think that would already be gone. Well, maybe not. But I was thinking because we were at war with them, you know, we probably wouldn't figure that we have to pay our debt to them. Well, that's not the case. So yeah, once they take all this, we'll start pushing forward here again. But until then, yeah, we're just going to uh, sit on the fence and restore our equipment shortages. Uh, we did get the heavy machine guns. That means we are going to go ahead and design those planes now. And uh, we're also done over here for now. Now, I would like to get the survivability studies. That would be helpful for us to get. But I don't think we're going to get it right now, guys. There's there's like all kinds of other stuff that we currently need, uh, including these, these tank techs. Uh, so let's go ahead and work on the engines now. And then we're going to go ahead and design, uh, redesign our three plane models here. And we'll start with the Heracleus, our fighters. And so what we're wanting to do here is we're going to go ahead and let's first change up the engine, give ourselves more thrust, and then we're going to go ahead and add in the heavy machine guns. Now, those do not reduce agility or the max speed. They're just changing the production costs, making it uh, cost more production. However, our air tax going up by four points here. So it's going to be only one more production for four more air attack. Uh, so I think that's gonna be useful. Uh, so yeah, we'll add this on both of them. And so it does get more expensive production wise, but I think we're also gonna add a whole a whole new one on here. Again, it's gonna be it's gonna be more expensive, which is unfortunate. But I wanna get that air attack as, as high as possible. So again, we're really focusing on the quality here rather than the quantity, because yeah, it's gonna be produced kind of slow. Uh, and then we're not even done here yet. Uh, we need to get the the drop tanks as well, because range is incredibly important. So I think that's worth the two production. So our total production cost is gonna go up from 28 to 35. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot more expensive here. But I think it's, it's worth it. I think that's all we'll do as well. So let's go ahead and save this. And then we'll get these building. Lose a little bit of efficiency there. And then next, let's do the Leos. So let's go and start out with the engine, because we can't even do anything until we do improve this. I think we were on the, yeah, one times engine. So let's go ahead and do a level three here. Give us a bit more flexibility. And then the first thing we're gonna wanna add is the dive brakes, increasing the air defense and naval targeting here. Uh, though they don't even do the, the naval strike, they can do the port strike missions. And I did make the mistake of not changing the name here. So we gotta go back in here and change that real quick. So re-add those dive brakes, change the engine up again. And then the only thing really left to do, you could, if you wanted to add the bomb locks, and then I'll give you a more ground attack 
You're going to lose a lot more agility, though this plane probably doesn't have any agility anyways when it does uh, the close air support mission. Would allow you to also improve your your naval strike. Actually, these guys don't even have the ability to naval strike, so it would give us the ability to naval strike. But I don't think we're going to do that, guys. I don't think it's worth it. Instead, what I'd like to do is go ahead and change up the defense turret to get a higher air attack at the cost of uh, a bit of agility and a little bit more production. But I think I'm willing to pay for that. Because remember, this is their main form of defense for this particular plane is the air attack. Uh, they can attack back against the fighters. So yeah, I think this is good. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll go ahead and get these guys changed out. And then last is the Constantines. Let's make sure we change that letter this time here at the beginning. And then with the Constantines, there might not be a whole lot to be done here. I could see doing the, the drop tanks to give them more range. I suppose you could have done that for the close air support as well. Yeah, I guess that would have been an option too. Is change them up for the, uh, the drop tanks. But I think we're going to keep their production where it's at and just do this with the naval bombers. Yeah, I think we're just going to do it with the naval bombers. Nothing to be done here. And uh, we don't even need to change the engine up. Though if we did, we'd increase the max speed, which I think we had determined this was going to be their main form of defense, is having higher speed and agility. So yeah, we will actually go ahead and add that in. And then with the drop tanks, that doesn't reduce... Yeah, that doesn't reduce their agility at all, so we can go ahead and put those on. They'll lose a bit of their max speed, but that's not much at all. So yeah, let's go ahead and put the drop tanks on there to increase their range, because that would be helpful. Uh, naval bombers always have the issue of just not having enough range for them. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And then switch out these ones. All right, so we've redesigned all our planes, made them a bit better, while also making them more expensive. So it's going to be more expensive uh, production-wise to build them. Uh, how are we doing on rubber? We're still short. Even though we built those synthetic refineries. Okay, so we need to build more, basically. And no longer getting that lend lease either. We'll build these in these 80% locations. Yeah, I get two more of those going. And it looks like the Italians are almost done taking this territory. We could advance here, but again, I want them to get it all taken first. And yeah, the front's getting all messed up as well. And yeah, we have the supply issues too until we take that port. But yeah, we'll just sit on defense until they finish what they need to do. Uh, Japan lost a submarine here, so that means the Japanese are now in the Mediterranean. And we continue losing our own submarines as well, unfortunately. So we might need to go in here and replace some of those losses. So yeah, we'll take this guy, replace him there, and here, and here. All right, so just replace the, the subs that we lost. And have we fixed the infantry equipment problem? Almost. We're almost there, guys. Artillery and support equipment are really short, though. And uh, obviously, those are more expensive to build. So let's actually go ahead and go into both of those. Put eight factories into both of those. And just don't have many factories going in the planes due to the, the rubber shortages. So trying to get that fixed. Uh, Latvia, they're in the Central Powers, right? Yeah, so we do not want the non-aggression pack with them. Uh, Peru. So I didn't really see what happened over here. Okay, so they went into the Japanese faction. Uh, it looks like they're in the Fourth International, Venezuela is. So no longer fascist, they're communist. Okay. Uh, because they're in the Japanese faction, we will accept that. Americans are dotted all over the place. Are they still over here? I'm not entirely sure what's going on over here. It's kind of a mess. This is actually French territory, and they're in the Fourth International as well, still. I thought they capitulated. I thought that would result in... Okay, so Germany took over all France. Yeah, this is all, all France is now owned by Germany. Well, that's interesting. So you can't see that, of course, because the British are occupying it, but, but yeah, that's what happened there. So yeah, still waiting for our invasion to launch here. But yeah, just can't get control of this sea zone, unfortunately. But now the Japanese are over here. That might make it a little bit easier. Yeah, they're definitely losing. They lost all this territory here. And they've lost this here as well. So the Soviets are definitely losing here. 
Uh, our front was actually hungry. Oh, it's changing. But yeah, it does look like they're going to lose this territory. Remember, they're also fighting over here. But yeah, I'm surprised that the Central Powers are able to advance across two fronts, though I suppose they're not really advancing here, are they? They kind of stuck and not making any movement there. Or basically, it's the 4th International that they're pulling us into the conflict with. And we're going to continue to decline. I don't, I don't have any conflict with the 4th International. And, and given we have borders that we could advance on and take their territory, but I don't actually want to. Because then that only helps the Central Powers out, who is what I think is our next enemy. And that doesn't give us the time to deal with our problems, particularly our equipment shortages. So we can start building units and, and really build up now. Uh, let's go and get those passive defenses. Or you know what, actually let's do anti-partisan because we have one of our operatives currently doing that. So I'm just waiting for these guys to take this territory from Germany and they're just not. I'd love to get that though, just because it is the port. We, we might go ahead and attack there. Although you know what, we should probably get a planning bonus here first. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll bring this guy over here and this guy over here as well. Not sure why they won't let me. There we go. So we can try and do this attack with as many troops as we can get. But yeah, I'm just going to have to keep telling the Americans no, because I have no interest in fighting the 4th International. I feel like they're more like an ally to us. We're all at war with the same people here. And so yeah, I don't want to cause any more problems for the 4th International. I actually want them to do well in their, their conflicts. Let's go after the armor protection now. Now given there is territory to be helpful, like the, the oil over here would be nice. Well the thing is is that uh, we're not actually hurting on fuel. So yeah, I just don't think it's in our best interest going to war with the 4th International. Again, I'd prefer to stay at peace for a little while. Or not at peace, obviously we're at war with the Allies, but uh, not pushing any fronts forward. Uh, Venezuela has capitulated. All right, so now that we have, or we almost have them all over here. So we'll let them pull out of here, I guess, and then we'll attack. Uh, we can get another air doctrine. So let's go ahead and get the, probably the ground support one. Could also have done the naval mission efficiency. Sunk another convoy there, excellent. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to win here. We can. So that we can get that, that supply hub. We might have to build a port, guys. Yeah, we might have to. I just don't know that we're going to be able to get the supply over here otherwise. We can go ahead and let that one unit train. And yeah, we're going to have to build something. Because I don't know if we can take it. If they keep all those troops there. I mean, our supply is just so horrible here. So I think we will have to, unfortunately, build a port. And rather than put it right there, let's just put it here. Because then, yeah, it's right next to it. And then we'll take that up to the top so we can get it done. Kind of a bummer we got to invest in that. But we're not going to be able to advance. And they have troops here now. Where before we were advancing, you know, without any uh, any defense trying to stop us. We are losing the uh, equipment that we've been getting from all these other countries. Just probably because we're not as short. Yeah, infantry equipment is no longer short. All right, excellent. So that's great news. Uh, because that means we can actually start building more troops. Uh, so let's go ahead and do so now. Uh, that's pretty much all we were waiting on. Let's go ahead and train up some of these infantry. Probably won't be able to get very many. We don't want to actually have any shortages. Let's just do three for now. And are these guys done training? Yes, many of them are done. All right, excellent. The British actually have some troops over here. Uh, but another thing we need to do is design a new type of division for defense. And maybe one that just doesn't require much uh, stuff like artillery or anything like that. So let's go ahead and do that. It will probably be cheaper to just edit these guys. Yeah, I assume it would be cheaper because even if you got to take these out. Yeah, I guess that could be kind of expensive taking these out. But then, yeah, you don't have to pay for all this. But we have a lot of army experience anyway, so it's probably fine. Let's just go and duplicate that. And basically, we just need a name for these guys. And uh, for right now, we'll just call them um, Garrison Infantry. But that's not what we're going to leave it as. I'll look at your guys' suggestions in the previous videos and see if we have a uh, suggestion for our garrison infantry. But you can feel free to post some more uh, in the comments of this video. And yeah, we're going to be taking out this artillery here. Again, I don't know if this is actually the cheaper way of doing it. You know, we could probably just throw these infantry in here. 
So we will have them have the full combat with the 24, but it's just going to be infantry. And maybe some support. Like the engineer company makes sense, and we always want to have the field hospital as well. But I think we'll probably take out the artillery here. So we don't have to, to you know, give them guns. And then probably the cav as well, the cav recon. And maybe even logistic company as well. Just try and reduce the amount of support equipment that these are going to require. So they don't require too much. It's going to be 60 support equipment, uh, 20 trucks, and then the infantry equipment. So I think this is pretty good. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we're going to want to start uh, building some of those. Which, probably won't be able to build many. But we're going to need a lot. So let me just see here. I think we're actually going to pull back on these guys. And then just redo this real quick. So we can get two right now. I suppose that's fine. But as we get more infantry equipment, we'll add more of these. And what their role is, is defense. Uh, like over here. We we'll want them to be replaced. Now we could, of course, just take these guys and replace them. But yeah, they have the, the experience and stuff. So I don't want to do that. Some of them might also have some, some bonuses from awards they've gotten. So yeah, we don't want to use those guys. But yes, I did forget we have these infantry freed up. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and set up a new a new front, guys. Yeah, we're not facing any other naval invasions at this moment, so let's go ahead and take these guys. We'll keep their invasion here for now. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to delete these. Yeah, we won't defend against the naval invasions anymore. I'll just hope they don't they don't fire anymore. And looks like we also have one here. So let's go get rid of that. And then we need the front against the central powers. So let's go ahead and give them their orders. So let's go ahead and take two of these. And then send them over here to this front. It'll take them a while to get here. So hopefully we'll have the port close to being done by the time they do arrive. And then the rest of these come over to this front here in our preparation for war with the central powers which of course we will not do until we build up some and improve improve our issues and we are getting the equipment shortages dealt with so that's kind of the first step and then next is is building more units so we could go in and get those snorkels researched but I don't think we're gonna wait for the snorkels to actually build these submarines Let's just go ahead and build them now. Uh, so this is the 1940 submarine hole. So we'll just want to build one more of those. And then get the new subs designed. Yeah, we'll decommission all these as well. So get the, the new engines in there. Torpedoes. And then we'll leave open a slot here for when we get those snorkels. Because we don't even have radar or anything either. And then these are just going to be the same name that we had before. Nothing complicated. Just our attack subs. And then this is the third model here. Alright, excellent. So we'll save that. And then we'll get those set up to build. And just take all the dockyards from this as soon as they're done. Though, hmm. We aren't building convoys right now. So let's pull back on that. There we go. All right, so once they, they finish up, then we'll start building these, these new ones here. All right, excellent. So we got the subs designed. We'll add the snorkels to them. And I don't know if we'll, let me see how long this is gonna take. We'll just let them be set up to, to build continuous. But I expect that we will we'll only get one built before we have uh, the snorkels available. So now we're working on this this port here. It'll be done in November. Until then, I really do not expect that we'll be able to win over here. And we are losing trains to logistic strikes. So we could bring some fighters over here just to stop those those bombers. Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and bring. Looks like we only have the one fighters here. Hmm. So we actually are gonna need to take one of these ones from over here. And just looking at the coverage currently, 
The coverage is pretty close to the same. So I'm just gonna take these guys and then bring them over here to hopefully stop these bombings here. And actually, rather than put them on air superiority, just put them on interception, because that's all we really want them doing is, is attacking the bombers. Which it looks like they've already left. All right, so we've gotten construction four. Let's go, uh, go after the excavation next. Let me just take a look at our resource situation. So still short on the rubber. We haven't built these yet though either. We're still working on those currently. Uh, the United States keeps calling us into these conflicts, which we have uh, done non-aggression packs against some of those, I suppose. Did we do a non-aggression pack with them? No, we didn't do a non-aggression pack with them, but somebody who's a member uh, of the 4th International, we do have non-aggression pack with them, so we would lose political power, which we almost have the 300 here that we've been waiting on. And then uh, once we get that, I think we should be able to get rid of some of these. Uh, get rid of that one problem that we have here. Where is that? The debt. Where we're losing stability and factories. Uh, we got the anti-partisan. Let's go to get the next level now. Uh, also, we got our new medium tanks here. And so we now have the most recent medium tanks. But we still don't have the engines and the armor. So we're going to need to let at least the engines finish up. Or it's going to be a really, really slow tank before we try and design anything, which these are done here in 17 days. So now the question is, do we want to use trucks for those medium tanks or do we want to use mechanized? Because we don't actually have the mechanized yet. So we would have to research that. I suppose we're going to want to get this regardless because it does improve the hardness of the trucks. Uh, another thing though that we still don't have yet is the radar. And that's really useful for the tanks in addition of just having the, the radar for the ships and be able to build the state-based radar. So we really need to get that as well. I mean, where there's so many things for us to research. We're very behind on the, the research, unfortunately. Something more convoys there. Right, excellent. So yeah, bringing some troops over here. You can see that it is a massive front, though. And so we do not have enough to cover the entire thing. Doesn't help that we have these six divisions over here waiting to do this invasion. And maybe we should bring two more over there. You know, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get two of these new guys and bring them over to this invasion. Just to make sure it succeeds whenever it does launch. Which I'm hoping will eventually get control here and we'll be able to launch that. Uh, we do have some more submarines, so let's go ahead and throw these into here. And this one isn't going to be able to join there since they're currently at battle. So I have to wait. Uh, Sweden wants military access. We're going to continue to decline that. And uh, we will take the artillery from Bulgaria. And now we can do the illegally default on our debt. It does say that it has unintended consequences, so we're going to see what happens there. But we don't really care about any of these three countries being mad at us. I imagine there's going to be some kind of other penalty. But it would be great to get those civilian factories back, so let's just do it. And then we might want to make sure that we're notified of any of these other things that we could do. Now that we're going to have the political power, though, I think any spare political power we get, we'll probably spend on giving awards to our uh, divisions. So we'll have this here in a couple weeks, this port, and then it'll get us the supply we need so we can do the attack there. And those two divisions did get over here already, so they're further exhausting the supply, unfortunately. But yeah, we're just too far away from uh, Tripoli here to get the supply that we need. So we'll uh, get the port done, and then we'll do the attack. And I don't know what's going to happen here, because for whatever reason, Italy just does not want to take that territory back, which is kind of weird. Because they really should be trying to, to go grab that. Now, we did get our national focus completed. All right, excellent. So we actually lose civilian factories from that, but we gain resources. So we'll get some resources. Uh, we lose the, the bonus for construction speed for civilian factories. And then we won't have to pay more for the changing of economic and trade laws, but we're not even doing that anyways. Now there is those investment schemes. I'm not entirely sure what those are. So let me know down in the comments if those are actually worth getting. But since I don't know what they are, I'm not going to spend the time to get them. Not when we have all these other things that we still have to get. And I think what we're going to do is go ahead and get the defending our seas. Though, we should probably make our decision 
on what we want to get here at least. This is a research bonus for the light tanks. Okay, so that's not even useful. And then that leads you down to this one here. So I really think it's an easy choice then that we should go with this route. So that's what we're going to do. However, I don't think we're going to get that just yet. Let's do the defending our seas first to get the air doctrine research bonuses. I think that'd be useful. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll take a look at these battles here. Looks like there's a battle in the Black Sea here. The American submarines are over here. So yeah, the Americans, let me just see what they're currently doing. Okay, so they're currently over here in Venezuela. And so there's like a three-way war going on over here. Because Venezuela still exists as well, and they're in the Fourth International, and then you have the British here with the Allies, and then you have our ally, America. Okay, so they're, they're pretty much focusing on the Americas currently. We have not seen them bring any of their own troops over here to assist us, but that's probably because we don't have any fronts outside of this one. So there's really not much for them to do in this area. But yeah, the uh, Americans are, are engaging in the Fourth International Conflict, which I wish they hadn't. I wish they'd stayed out of that, but uh, that's not what happened. Uh, so here for the casualties, we now have 38,000. It seems like our casualties haven't gone up much this episode. We haven't done that much, though, either. Uh, unfortunately, we got stopped on our advancement here in North Africa due to that peace treaty. But the Americans have already lost 75,000. We have 76% of the total war participation, uh, but that does not include any of the other factions. This is just our faction. Now, looking at the casualties for our enemies, we've killed 315,000 of the British. Yeah, that's just fantastic kill-death ratio. 6,000 Malayans. 58,000 Belgians. The Italian Yugoslavia has lost almost 88,000 to us. Italy, 232,000. Italian East Africa, 21,000. Canada, 17,000. South Africa, 11.4,000. India, 34,000. All right, so yeah, really good kill-death ratio all the way around here. Uh, you see they have lost 890,000 to us, while we've lost 113,000. They do have more field and manpower, as you'd expect, with all these countries in that alliance. All right, so that's going to have to be the end of today's episode. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.